Just like every other sector of the economy, the hospitality industry suffered the worst hit by the coronavirus pandemic. The closure of international boundaries to contain the spread of the virus saw most facilities closed down and hundreds of thousands of employees losing their jobs in the process. And even with the opening of the economy, the industry is still operating at between 20 to 30 percent bed occupancy. Industry players say the impact will have a long-term effect, as Lillian Muli reports. The effects of COVID-19 are not just devastating, but also long-term. Two recovery things. When it comes to domestic tourism, that is on currently, and keep in mind, domestic tourism is on and off. Uh, when I say on and off, is uh, you are busy in a festive period, you are busy on a long weekend, you are busy on a weekend, and then you drop down during the weekdays. That is how domestic tourism operates. International tourism, we do not see it recovering even 20, 000, 2021. A recovery will only happen probably in 2022. The Sarova Stanley, a preferred business traveler's hotel in the Nairobi CBD, has been non-operational for about five months. And we're just trying to survive to make sure that we have uh, some cash flow uh, that we can use to protect wages for our staff. Uh, but we do need a lot of help um, as an industry uh, to support our businesses uh, to stay afloat. The knock-on effect within the hospitality industry has created havoc. Restricted movements and business closures mean corporate bookings are taking a serious hit. The Kenyatta International Convention Center has witnessed major cancellations and postponement of events due to the COVID-19 pandemic. With virtual meetings becoming the new norm, what is the future of conferencing in Kenya? Meeting and conference rooms are among the worst affected. The current business events industry has embraced the use of technology to conduct meetings. We're actually doing um, refurbishing of KICC. Um, some of our, well, it's obviously a, a dated um, building, you know, over 47 years now. Um, so what we're actually also doing is uh, re renovating some of our smaller meeting rooms, um, bring them up digitally. So you'll be able to do your video conferencing. And it's literally just you and maybe two or three other people in that room holding your meetings, your virtual meetings. So we're seeing that was a, um, a des definite necessity for us to do that. Um, and on the bigger scale, your big meetings, um, that one really is something that we're also going to have to work on as, you know, we're a government entity. So again, really get um, a good ICT partner because it's really about bandwidth. It's about capacity. It's about um, platform. For others, such as the social house in Nairobi, innovation was the only path to survival. As soon as the president um, uh, reduced some of the measures, we were very quick to try reopen. We were actually one of the only hotels that said, you can come and order takeaway. And it actually helped us actually get to know our clients better. We are a very creative bunch of people and we have created different products to meet Nairobi's ever-changing requirements. So I will give you an example. So we have rooms for private dining. So private dining rooms is, of course, with COVID and all its fears around um, catching COVID, people, families can actually come for dinner and have their own room, which is basically a bedroom that I've converted into a restaurant where you can have a meal and you feel safe within the space. <laughs> But then there were national parks taking a direct hit from the drastic decline of foreign tourists. Our budget dropped by over 77%, uh, our internal revenue, and you notice know, a significant amount that we used to, for operation. So uh, the Ministry of Finance has made a commitment uh, to support our operations. The industry now rests its hope on domestic tourists, but many Kenyans feel they just cannot afford. We need to understand uh, the, the pricing model, uh, that there are many, many elements uh, within a rate, and it's not just all profit. Uh, there are taxes, uh, statutory taxes, so there's uh, the VAT, 
there's service charge, uh, uh, which we, we also have to um, include. Uh, and there's also catering levy. That is also a government, a statutory tax that we pay to the tourism fund. So that comes to about 24%. Yeah, and there are other uh, um, expenses that are also related to the rate, you know, whether it's uh, uh, salaries for, for, for housekeeping, whether it's amenities uh, that we use for cleaning. Uh, so really, the amount of, uh, that's left over after you take all those uh, elements out is very, very minimal. The park rates uh, or conservation fees getting to the parks was reduced between 15 and 50%. Uh, across our parks and it was targeting both the citizens and here when we talk about uh, citizens we refer to Kenyan citizens and uh, citizens from the East African community member states and uh, we then also targeted the non-residents in the hope that when it opens up it will be an incentive to actually encourage them to, to visit. The Way app is now the big assignment for players in Kenya's once vibrant tourism industry. We uh, need a complete waiver of VAT. Uh, not a reduction, we need a waiver of VAT for at least 18 months. You know, that's very important for us, you know, so that at least we're able to use our liquidity to pay wages. Uh, we need a, a much uh, larger rescue package. Um, again, to support our liquidity, to keep our businesses open so that we can protect jobs. Uh, if our businesses are not open, we cannot protect those jobs. So we need a lot more uh, fiscal support. We need a lot more budgetary support uh, from the government to keep the industry going. And in so doing, uh, there is no doubt that the tourism industry will spur the recovery of many, many other sectors. You know, COVID has taught us a lot about, um, you know, um, the, the things about uh, revenue, cutting back, um, seeing what your priorities are monetary wise, um, I would have to say virtual would really be a, a big thing with that. We can help ourselves as a country if we revised our requirement, especially when it comes to COVID testing, the PCR testing, where you're required to do your testing 96 hours before coming to Kenya. Those four days, which is 96 hours, is very, very limiting and is becoming quite a hindrance for anybody coming from those countries. December used to be a peak season for the tourism sector. But the players contend a lot has changed and the industry is having to go back to the basics. In social distancing, uh, everyone, you, you need to have a mask in the restaurant. Yeah, we just need uh, guests to understand that you come by the time you get in the gate, you get your temperature, uh, you sanitize, you uh, uh, corona free zone. And the quest for the way up continues for Kenya's tourism sector. A sense of normalcy is slowly returning to Kenyan beaches. This is Diani Beach, and here you see pockets of people going about their business, even during the coronavirus pandemic. Lillian Muli, Citizen TV. <laughs>